Hey guys, here today with my September reads. It actually feels super good to be sitting down and filming this after last month not really having a monthly reads video up. Uh, for those of you who missed my non-monthly reads video that I put up, um, I moved house last month so things are a bit up in the air and crazy, but uh, in lieu of a monthly reads video I did show you guys a quick overview of uh, my new setup behind me, all of my bookshelves and how my books are currently looking, so if you're interested in that I will have the video linked in the description bar. Now this month wasn't super ambitious as far as reading goes, but compared to last month's one read, uh, it was pretty fantastic and I actually enjoyed everything I read, so let's get into it. We'll start out with my audiobook for September, and I guess I was getting a little bit of a head start on my October reading uh, since I went with kind of a spooky non-fiction read. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see, but I this is the book that I listened to on Audible. Um, the Demonologist, The Extraordinary Career of Ed and Lorraine Warren by Gerald Briddle. And anyone who's not familiar with Ed and Lorraine Warren, um, Ed was, they were a married couple, and Ed was a demonologist and Lorraine uh, was a psychic, like a medium type thing. And if you've seen the movie The Conjuring, uh, they are the real life sort of ghost hunter-esque people that appear in that film. Uh, they were, they had a lot to do with many sort of large paranormal cases throughout history. They were consulted over things like the Amityville Horror. Uh, they very strongly believe in not, well, spirits as well, but spirits apparently are not the thing that you need to be freaked out about. Apparently, uh, like, demon spirits is like, the scary thing. It was just a really interesting non-fiction listen. It um, sort of had lots of different stories of different cases that they worked on, uh, their philosophy for how they did their job, what they believed in. So if you're interested in sort of paranormal type things and if you were a fan of things like The Conjuring, um, I definitely do recommend it, either reading the physical copy or listening to it on Audible. Um, but yeah, it was fun. And I, I mean, I don't necessarily know that I believe in these things, but I did find it interesting um, and enjoyable to listen to. Uh, I had a look at the reviews before I read it, and there was a bunch of people being like, if you scare easily, don't listen to this, it is so freaky, oh my god, panic, and just all these like very sort of hyped up reviews. And I, I don't scare particularly easily, so I was sort of listening to it going, I don't know what these guys are talking about, this isn't anything at all. When I got to the recounts of the goings on around the doll Annabelle, uh, which is featured in The Conjuring, and then there was sort of a spin-off uh, film just called Annabelle, which the film I don't think is necessarily based on the true story, um, but the stuff in The Conjuring is. That stuff, I was listening to it uh, at home alone in the middle of the day, completely bright. It was a day like now, um, plenty of sunshine, and I was actually in here tidying some stuff up and I just had it on in the background. And every little noise, I was like, what the hell was that? Pausing it, listening. <laughs> like, it totally freaked me out. I have no idea why. Uh, but yeah, it was definitely, it was a fun one. And if you like sort of spooky stuff, uh, it's a good one. I had two other non-fiction reads this month, so I will get into those next. Uh, first up, I read Bill Bryson's Notes from a Big Country. And I really enjoy Bill Bryson, and there's a few of his books that I haven't read yet, and this was one of them. And this one is actually a series of articles, uh, sort of essay style. So each section is really only a couple of pages long. Uh, so it's very, it's very easy to sort of dip in and out of. It's a good one that if you've only got a couple of minutes to read, you can pick this up and like read a couple of sections. Bill Bryson is very witty and he's quite sassy at times. And most of these essays are actually from when he had, him and his family had just moved back to the States after living in the UK for 20 years. Since his wife is English, uh, sort of he's been living over there and this is when they decided to move back to America. It's just sort of him getting re-acclimated with American culture and the differences between England and America and it was just really good, really, uh, 
he could be a little bit bitchy at times, but I found it hysterical. Some of the topics he chooses to talk about are more interesting than others, but in the end, each little essay is only like three pages long, so it's really not an issue if you come across one that's not, you know, as interesting as another. But I would say I enjoyed at least 90% of the articles in the book, and there are quite a lot of them in there. But I definitely enjoy Bill Bryson, and this was a fun one. Next up, I read this. This is Call Me Lucky by Bing Crosby, and I love Bing, and this is his memoir. Um, this is from the 50s. This is from the mid-50s. I think it's 54, I want to say, that this was written and published. And I was not sure how good this was going to be. I mean, the 50s, I thought that maybe this was just... Uh, sort of a like a cheaply put together fan book type thing and that it was probably ghost written and full of uh, not that much but I while I'm not 100% positive I would say that Bing definitely wrote this himself as far as uh, my impression of him goes it just feels like Bing's voice. This is written uh, probably less than a year after his first wife Dixie passed away, so there is a lot about her in there, a lot about his boys and uh, you know how much she kept their family together and how much she is going to be missed from their life, so that was uh, pretty sad actually. But I really did enjoy this. It's full of lots of little uh, sort of fun anecdotes. If you know anything about Bing Crosby, he was a huge golf lover and there is a disproportionate amount about golf in this book. Uh, and I'm not that into golf, so that was uh, not super fun. But overall, I did really, really enjoy this. And it just it was just a nice little insight into his life, his career, um, especially in those early days, since this is mid-50s and he did his career continued for quite a while after this. And unfortunately my two favourite uh, Bing Crosby movies are White Christmas and High Society and both of those were filmed after this book came out so I didn't get any fun little insights into those films which is disappointing but I still really enjoyed this and as far as I am aware this is still in print obviously in a different edition. Clearly this is a vintage edition that I picked up. I would say this is a pretty early printing, although it doesn't have a date in it. Um, and I picked this up for $4, so cannot complain, and I did actually really enjoy the content. Next up, a couple of children's books that I read. And before we get into them, I just want to quickly mention that those of you who've been on my channel for a while will know that last November I did Children's Literature Month, so I will be doing that again this year. So next month is going to be Children's Literature Month, where I'm just going to be reading Kids Lit. Um, so... I will talk more about that later on, I just wanted to bring it up just in case any of you guys want to join in and want to seek out some children's books you've been wanting to read, so there's that. So the first children's book I read is this one here that will be featured in an upcoming haul that I should have already put up that I filmed a little while ago but I haven't yet. <laughs> Anyway, so this is the Twist Rose Key, and this is, uh, I still haven't looked up how to say this author's name, Tone Ametil. I'm really not sure, I'm sorry for butchering that so horrendously. Uh, but this was actually a birthday gift from Mercedes over at Mercy's Bookish Musings, and I had so much fun reading this. This came at the perfect time. Um, I was sort of still in the middle of moving, all of my books were still packed up. This arrived in the mail, and it just was such a nice release when I had five seconds to sit down and read. Uh, reading a couple of chapters of this was just great. So this is kind of a fantasy children's story. Our main character, Lynn, uh, had recently lost her pet, and by lost I mean he passed away, um, and she's been devastated and missing him so much, and I've completely forgotten what type of animal he is. This is him here. He's like um, sort of a mouse hamster type thing. I've completely forgotten what he actually is. But his name is Rufus. And it turns out that Rufus has actually gone to this place where animals that were loved by their human owners and that they love them back, they end up at this sort of realm. Long story short, there is all kinds of stuff happening in this place that shouldn't be happening. And Rufus leaves the Twist Rose Key for Lynn to come into this world and help set things right. And of course, it's an excuse for them to see each other again. And I don't know if you can see this picture properly, but in this world, uh, sizes of animals do not stay the same. So Rufus is now as big as Lynn. 
It is a really sweet, fantastical little adventure. There's all kinds of stuff going on. It's pretty action-packed all the way through. The characters are really great. It's such an imaginative, fun story. Getting to know the world that all this was happening in was really fun. I just, I really enjoyed this. It was just a nice distraction from everything else and it was just, it was great. The other children's book I read this month is the next book in the Enola Holmes series. This is book five and this is The Case of the Cryptic Crinoline. If you have for some reason not heard me talk about this series before, uh, it is a sort of spin-off of Sherlock Holmes type of series. Enola Holmes is actually the younger sister of Sherlock and Mycroft and it is just like a fun mystery series. I thoroughly enjoy these. Obviously they're set in sort of Victorian London. This particular one has the included character of uh, Florence Nightingale, which was a fun little add-on. I've enjoyed all of these so far. I think I only have one left that I haven't read, which is desperately sad because I really, really enjoy this series. And if you do like children's books and if you do like mystery series, then I highly recommend picking these up because they are just such fun. And lastly, I started another mystery series. This one uh, is not a children's series and this book actually appears in the haul that will be coming up soon as well. And this is the first in the Agatha Raisin series. And this is Agatha Raisin and the Quiche of Death. Uh, this is by MC Beaton. And I had picked up a few of these books uh, here and there. I think I have three others that I'd picked up very cheap, just sort of randomly seen them. Thought they looked interesting, but didn't really know much about them. Uh, so I finally picked up the first one to see what series was all about and I read this in no time. It was so much fun. It actually completely exceeded expectations. I mean, don't get me wrong, this definitely isn't the most amazing thing I've ever read, um, but just as far as a little bit of escapism fun, this was just really, really enjoyable. Agatha Raisin is actually a middle-aged public relations consultant, I suppose. Um, she retires early and she moves to the Cotswolds and to be honest she's a little bit bored at first. Uh, but things happen and we get some mysteries going on. Agatha is not the most likeable character and she's not meant to be and I actually really enjoy that. I like that she's sort of got this edge to her, um, that she doesn't quite know how to uh, relate to people. She kind of doesn't know how to not be this cutthroat businesswoman. So seeing her in a small town setting with these small town characters is quite fun. I did really enjoy this and I think I will probably be tracking down the rest of the series at some point. So that was it for September guys. Those were my reads. I really enjoyed everything. I just had a nice relaxing reading month and I think I really needed it and it was just yeah, it was definitely fun. Um, I'm going to attempt to read a couple of scary stories in October, get into the Halloween spirit, as well as whatever else takes my fancy, uh, before I delve into Children's Literature Month again in November, which, if it's anything like last year, will be a lot of fun. So that's about it, guys. If you've read any of these, I would love to know what you thought of them. Thank you all for watching, and I will see you soon.